Hey guys, welcome to Behind the Streams. My name is Zeus Caboose, and today we'll be learning on how to create your own stream avatar. Before we get started, you'll need a few applications. First is Photoshop. Second is a sprite. If you do not have Photoshop, you can find an online Photoshop tool, which is in the link of the description below. Now let's get started on the dimensions. A good dimension length is usually by 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels, or 1280 if you can see it here. Once you're happy with the canvas size, it's time to choose an image that you wish to animate. Today I've chosen a sprites package made by the Kittle Cat. She's an artist on Twitter. I've left all her links and item lists in the description below. Once you have your, all your images that you wish to animate, it's time to line them up. It is also important to remember that the character should always be facing to the right hand side. The reasoning behind this is that in stream avatars, it takes the frame of the character moving forward as focus to the right hand side. So if the character is facing to the left hand side, your character will technically be doing a moonwalk and you don't want that. And as you can see with my character, the character is facing to the left hand side. We can easily fix this by flipping the image. but it's always better to line up your images and your characters through the timeline correctly, and then you can flip your image. When lining up your character, it's important to understand which rows represent which stance in animation. Your top row should always be an idle animation. Second from that is your walking animation. Third is your sitting, and fourth is standing, and fifth is jumping. If you wish to add a custom animation that is not necessarily on the list, be sure for it to be after the fifth animation. With that, you can actually add different commands to trigger which animations you want with those. Now it's time to place the characters in the corresponding rows. I will now speed up the process to save us some time. Once you're satisfied with the image, make sure you export it as a PNG file and not a JPEG. Now that we have our image file, it is now time to use it in Asprite. Before we get started on Asprite, it is also important to remember that you get the legitimate version of Asprite as the trial version does not allow you to save any assets whatsoever. Once you have your correct version of Asprite, it's time to load up your PNG file. You can do this by hitting File, Open, and locate your PNG file wherever you've saved it. Once your image has loaded, you can see that all characters are still facing to the left-hand side. To fix this, hit the Selection tool, highlight your whole image, go to Edit, and hit Rotate Horizontal. Now that your characters are facing the right-hand side, it is time to keep track of your frame. The frames can be located by going to View, Grid, and Grid Settings. In the width and height, it is recommended that you put in 120 by 120. Once hitting OK, you'll see a blue grid. Each grid represents an animated frame. If you think your character is too big or too small for the box, you can adjust this by selecting your image and adjusting the height or width of your character to fit in the box. The reason why we want to select the whole image and not individual characters is because when you do so, or do a specific animation, the character will actually change their proportions and it'll look really strange and it won't be correct. As you can see, Arthur is currently out of the frame. I am slowly correcting it by adjusting the height and width so Arthur is actually within the box and not out. Once you're happy with the height and width of your character, what we're going to do now is individually move each character in their corresponding frames. But before we do this, we want to make sure that every character in each frame is lined up correctly. If there are different points within each frame, the character will look like it's teleporting or jumping around. So we want to create a new grid setting to 60 by 60. After doing this, you'll see that the grid is split into four blocks. Now you can select an individual character and slowly move him into the frame correctly. It's important to know that this selection tool is also known as like a cutting tool. 
So be aware that when you're cutting your character, make sure that the tool is not crossing over any of the characters in different frames. When moving your character within the individual box, try and use the four grid reference to find a static point in the image where you can use as a reference. A good example that I'm using here is the side goggles of Bloodhound. And as you can see in the next frame, the character is a bit too far forward. I am moving the character back so the side goggles are in the correct place just like in the first frame. So in order to save time on this video, I'm just going to fast forward this and we're going to get up to our next topic. Once all your characters are lined up in the corresponding frames and that you're happy with their current locations, you have to do a double check to make sure none of the characters are actually clipping through above or below each other. If the characters are clipping above and below the box, they will show up within the animation. So be sure to do minor corrections and adjustments to make sure that all characters are within their box. Now that all your characters are lined up in their corresponding frames, it is time to crop the canvas. To crop your canvas size, go to Sprite, Canvas Side. To find the correct dimensions of your canvas, find the row with the longest frame. Over here, at the top row, the idle animation, we have a character that has nine frames. And with remembering our pixel dimension size, you want to times 120 by nine, which will then be 1080. So for the canvas width, put in 1080. The same goes for the height. You want to count down on how many rows you've created. So over here we have a column of six. So that's six times 120, which is 720. Now that you have your dimensions of your canvas, do not hit OK just yet. Make sure your canvas is aligned correctly. To line up the canvas correctly, you want to find the cornerstone of the canvas, let's say the bottom right hand side. You want to take the last frame of the bottom hand right side and line them up correctly with the box. Once the canvas is lined up correctly, hit OK. And you're done with a sprite. So to save your file, go to File, Save As and put in a location where you can find it easily. Once you have the location of your file, you want to copy that. Once you have copied the file, launch Stream Avatars. Go to Open Folder, Avatars, and paste it in there. Once the file is in there, hit the Save and Reload button. Once you have saved and reloaded, go to Avatars, hit the drop down menu, and there you can find your file. Your file name should be the same as the file name that you saved in Asprite. Once you have selected your avatar, you can see that the box is currently just a box. There's no little individual characters. To fix this, go to Width and Height and put in 120 by 120. Sometimes you have to repeat this process as it may autocorrect your height and width. For me, a correct scale is 0.6 or 0.7. You can now see every character in their individual frames. You have idle, walk, sit, stand, and jump. If you guys are seeing blank frames in certain locations, it means that you, one of your characters are either clipping through the top half of the frame or below, or the app has detected some pixels that you forgot to erase or that are still there. So it's better to go into a sprite and try and look for it or just select a certain like location where you think it's empty with the selection tool and just hit delete. It's very simple, very easy, and then try and reload the file the same way I've showed you. And now we're going to go and hit connect and see the character in action. As you can see, this is a previous character I made recently as uh, Revenant. To change character, you just have to go to your Twitch profile and go and find your stream avatars extension and select your character through there. If you don't have the extension just yet, you can search for it and link your Twitch profile with stream avatars and it should be connected. Once you've selected your character, you can check out all the animations to see if they're correct or you're happy with them. And yeah, that's just about it. Um, thank you guys for joining me on my first uh, Behind the Streams video. 
I really appreciate it. And if you guys like this video and found it helpful or anything like that, uh, hit the like below. Or you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv Zeus Caboose. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.